Hi, this is Simon Upstall and welcome to another tutorial for Resolve Fusion. And today we're going to be taking a look at importing some 3D elements from Blender to create this scene. So let's take a look. So I'm just going to start us off in Blender and explain what elements we're going to be exporting. So let's turn off the sphere segment. So we're going to be duplicating this in Fusion to make a complete sphere. We've got this flywheel and again, we're going to be duplicating that to make several instances of that. And then we've got this central rotor, which we can also animate. And our camera is attached to an empty, which is creating this rotation. As well as that, we have got some lights which are also attached to an empty and the, they will animate as well using the empty. Don't worry about all that if it doesn't make any sense to you. You don't really need to know that much about any of this. So how are we going to export this? We've got so many different options and they all have their advantages and disadvantages. The method we're going to use is far from ideal when it comes to animation. So basically we're going to be disregarding the animation because of the other advantages that we want to be able to leverage. So let's come to file and export. And what we're going to use is FBX. Now, one of the things we could do here is to set the scale so that it's going to come into Fusion correctly, but I'm actually not going to do that. I'm going to leave the scale at the default and I'll show you at the other end what the problems are. And so basically the defaults are pretty good here. And so we're going to export that and we're going to come over to Fusion and bring it in. So here we are in Fusion. We did an FBX export and you might think that what you want to do is use an FBX mesh. So let's just show you why you don't want to do that. If you use an FBX mesh, this is all you get and it has got no materials. Everything's joined together. That's no use to us at all. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to come to import an FBX scene and we're going to select our export and we're going to click open and then we'll get this menu here. Now I've deliberately turned off animation, but everything else on this column is selected. And I'm going to set these scale units to the default of one so we can see the problem of doing that. So press OK. Here is our flow, which has got lots of very useful information in it, as you can see, and I'll go through that later on. I just want to show you why we don't want to do this. Our grid has completely disappeared. The scale is just much, much too large to be able to use the grid or the basic functionality of Fusion. So I'm just going to delete that and I'm going to come back and re-import. This time around, we're going to scale it to the right scale for Fusion. And that's a hundredth of this scale. So 0 0.01 for those scale units. Bring that in. And now if we look at it and zoom in, you can see we can see our grid and everything is pretty much the same size as it was in Blender. So you see we've got this pretty elaborate flow here. Uh, there's stuff that we don't need. So I'm going to delete that merge, delete this point cloud, delete that camera inverse. So let's look through the flow. We've got our flywheel there. We've got our rotor there. We've got our sphere segment there. We've got this, which is material for the panels. So that's basically the metal for the rotor and the flywheel and also those metal panels on the sphere segment. And you'll notice that the sphere segment has actually got two materials that have been correctly assigned. And the other one is the glass. This, which is a material supposedly for the glass, not looking right at all. We're going to fix that later on. We've got our camera, which is going into an empty, which we can use to rotate the camera. We've got two lights here, different colors that are going into this empty here. Both of these empties, of course, are just 3D merges in fusion terms, uh, but we can use them to create animation. So in terms of our basic setup, this is really pretty good. Now I'm just going to switch to a different layout just for the purposes of this tutorial, make it easier for you to see exactly what's going on. So there you go. We've got this new layout where the flow is over on the left and we've got a nice big viewer over in the middle. So what I'm going to do is after this root node is add a 3D renderer. And let's take a look at that here. So I'm going to switch to hardware renderer and I'm going to turn on lighting. 
Now, despite the fact there are lights in our scene, we can't actually see any lights. So let's come to these lights and try and understand what it is. The problem is that this empty is not passing the lights through. So we need to select it and just turn that on. And immediately you can see we've got these lights in the middle there like that. I'm just going to turn off that sphere segment while I show you what's happening here with the lights. Their intensity has come through as 500, which is obviously a crazy number. We don't want that. So I'm going to go for 0.5. And I'm also going to switch to linear decay and just do the same thing for that other one. So 0.5 for the intensity and linear. So let's look at our sphere segment again, turn that back on again. In actual fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some additional lighting just so we can start to see the scene properly. So I'm going to add a three point light and I'm going to add it to this root node, which is basically obviously a 3D merge. This point light, I'm going to move to negative two on X and one on Z. And again, I'm going to come to the controls, set the fall off to linear, copy and paste, add this one to the merge. And this one I want to move to the back. So I'm just going to move it to one on X and negative two on Z. So our supposedly glass panel is just not looking right at all. So we can come to this body, which is the, the glass material or the quasi glass material, and we can just try and make it at least transparent. So the way to do this is to turn the alpha down to 0.1. And now you can see that it's see through. And the other thing I want to do is come into its specular and set its intensity up to at least one and maybe that exponent could go up to 50. Now the key thing to realize when you're compositing 3D in Fusion is that you're never going to get ray tracing which is what makes glass look like glass and really is the thing that makes things ultimately look photorealistic. So it's just something you have to live with. Uh, we can probably make this look quite good though. So the first thing I want to do with this sphere segment is to add a 3D duplicate. I'm going to have eight copies. I'm going to come down to the Y rotation and set that to 45 degrees. And now we've got a complete sphere like that. Or rather, we would have a perfect sphere, but our sphere segment in the export process has actually got out of alignment. So you see, see it's got this rotation on X of negative 110. I need to set that to negative 90 and you see that sorts that out. And this is one of the perils of exporting 3D is there are always funny little things that you need to have to sort out. It's not always obvious why they've happened. Another thing I want to do is come back to my renderer and here under transparency, I'm going to set it to sorted and you can see the difference that makes really very considerable difference to, to the actual look of it. And I also want to come back to the body material, diffuse color, we're going to sort this out in a different way later on, but I'm just going to turn that down. And as you see, the more we make it black, the more it actually looks uh, transparent as it should. So while we're here, let's actually animate this sphere segment. Let's come to the transform, Y rotation, expression, and let's have time. And I think that's probably on its own just going to be enough gentle rotation like that don't really like compositing over this checkerboard. So I'm going to add a background to that renderer, look at the merge and then swap the order. I'm just going to hide the controls there. So let's maybe just talk a little bit more about the materials and so on before we actually go on and animate the rest of it. So what I want to do is I want to bring in a loader and I'm going to bring in this thing that's you can see these windows here we have a look at that, it looks like this. And I'm going to add to that a sphere map. I'm going to turn on angular mapping. You can see we've got these windows mapped around our sphere. And then I'm going to add in a reflect node. And I'm going to take the sphere map output and bring it into the reflection color material and the reflection intensity material. And now if I take this, and I pipe it into the diffuse color material for the body. Let me come over and look at the result. Let's come to the reflect and let's turn up the face on strength quite a bit like that. And in doing so, we're making the glass even more transparent, but we've now got these nice window reflections. And we can actually also use this as the diffuse input to the panels. Uh, so let's do that. 
and you can see that they too are now picking up that reflection and that's going to start to make them look a lot more shiny. We could always add to this sample HDR a brightness contrast and if we were for it to example adjust the gamma you can see we can adjust the overall lighting we can increase the highlights with the gain like that so we can actually control the lighting using this HDR. So it's not a true HDR, but it, it's per perfectly good for the purposes of this. And you can see also we've got these little highlights here on the, on the, the core rotor metal. And that's, that's quite a good start. So let's actually do some bit more animation. Let's, so we've animated our sphere segment. Let us just turn off the sphere segment while we work. Let's grab this flywheel, move it out here a bit. I'm going to move it to 0.3 on Y. And then I'm going to add a 3D duplicate to it and set the Y offset to negative 0.6. Let's animate the Y rotation with an expression. So time, I think, times negative 0.7. And those are going to go around like that. And then what I'm going to do is that I'm going to duplicate this, copy and paste. I need to take my panels material into this new version and I need to take the duplicate output into the root node. And then with the duplicate selected, come to transform, set the scale to 0.75. See, we've got a smaller version. I'm going to come to the transform here, set the Y to 0.6, and in the duplicate, set the transform to negative 1.2. And then we can also come into the animation and let's maybe make this faster in the opposite direction. So times positive 11. So they'll go around in opposite directions like that. So then let's select the rotor. And all we really need to do with this is animate its Y rotation. Again, we can do it with an expression and we can use time again. I think time times two is probably enough for that. And we can turn on our sphere segment again. So what else do we need to do? We need to animate our camera. So let's select our camera empty. Let's come to the first frame. I'm going to keyframe the X rotation and set its value to 120. So we're slightly looking down like that. Come to the last frame and set it to negative 30. So we're looking up into the body of the sphere like that. So that's our camera animation. Let's select our lights empty now and come to the transform. So what we're going to do is add an expression to the Y because I want these lights to oscillate up and down. So we can use sine, open brackets, time, divided by 24 perhaps, close brackets. And I don't want them to go all the way, so I'm going to type times 0.75, I think. You can hopefully see those lights are moving up and down. And then we also want them to rotate. So let's add an expression to the Y. And let's use negative time times three. So now they're going to spin round. We've got lots of, of interesting animation going on there. What I think probably needs to happen is we need some more lights. So I'm going to select one of these, copy and paste it, add it to the root node, and then let's adjust its position. Let's go for zero on X, negative 1.25 on Y, zero on Z. So we're lighting up the bottom and let's just reduce the intensity. 0.3 I think is probably good. And then add a 3D duplicate and then move it up on Y. So let's go for 2.5 I think. You see we're just kind of get, getting more light going on into the body of the object. And if we wanted to move this light here maybe positive 2 on X and 0 on Z. So that gives us a bit more of a fill on the right hand side, getting a little bit more shininess of it. So I'm just going to come to the background and I'm going to switch to gradient and radial and swap these two around so the white is on the left. And I want to set this X starts 2.5 and then let's just adjust this color it's just to give us a little bit more interest in the background. And really from this point on, I want you to tweak everything to your own personal taste. So this was really just an overview of how this FBX scene import works and the various advantages and disadvantages of using it. At some point, I might explore the USD workflow, which is very different and has its own benefits. So thanks for watching and see you again soon.